Hello, I'm ABX Sleeker, and this is Q&A Saturday, the weekly series on my channel where I answer your questions that have been asked over the past week or so, both on my channel and in response to certain questions on my Twitter. The uh, idea behind this is it's a good opportunity to answer some of the questions that have been asked by you, the subscribers, and also it's just a good opportunity for me to talk about some, you know, various subjects for about a minute or two each, so I can address lots of different things in one big Q&A, which I'm going to be doing in today's video. Hopefully you all do enjoy. You can like it if you do like Q&A Saturday, because it helps out the channel a lot and uh, feeds the wife and kids, as you all do know. So with that said, let's get straight into the first first question, which comes in from Babin Mishra, who says, if we are fully caught up with PC and PE, what will we see in the December update this year? Question mark, explanation mark. That's how uh, both frantically questioning, but also confused they are about this. So what we see in the December update this, this year, which we've had a December update, something like every year, but one Minecraft console has existed. So what's going to be in that update if we have everything from the, the Pocket Edition and the PC? Well, the simple answer is we don't have everything quite yet. There's stuff like the dual wielding, there's stuff like customized worlds. There's lots of tiny features they could add. So but you know, as far as like a big update, because that's what December usually is, uh, what are we likely to see? Well, that's a big question that I honestly am not quite sure on the answer to. So bear in mind, 1.13 is in development PC right now. 1.3 will be in development soon for Minecraft Pocket Edition. There are going to be new features to take by then, hopefully. But if we assume like, okay, nothing comes out till like January of next year, what are we going to see in the December update? Well, then we'd see a uh, snapshot stuff. But what do we say like, oh yeah, they've already caught up with that in like August, or uh, sorry, like uh, like September or something. What are they going to do then? And honestly, the first answer is easy, like a mini game. But you know, once if we have like four or five mini games by then anyway, then what are they going to do at that point? Well, that's a, a good question, and I think they might do something else like they did with mini games, because that was like a fun opportunity, uh, to build, uh, do something like there is on PC, but in a console better way. So, for instance, think about map sharing. That'd be amazing. Think about a way just to have lots of various challenge maps you could play, or like, you know, there's so many different formats they could take for like an interesting way to do something for the consoles, and uh, that's what we probably see instead. However, I imagine we'll see some big uh, combination of PC features of, uh, you know, like, think I think we'll just see lots of features and we'll have a big update in the form of features from those versions too, but I'd like to be pleasantly surprised and map sharing would be crazy great. But let's move to the second question already, shall we? Which comes in from uh, the uh, Frontline Productions who say, I think that YouTube comments would also benefit if everyone tried to report these spam comments. So yeah, YouTube comments been going downhill. I feel like I'm one of the few people that'll say this because you don't want to ever say like, oh yeah, the YouTube comments are bad because most of you, you know, most of your YouTube viewers and it feels like it's insulting you, but I want it to be clear. I'm not insulting you, reasonable person listening to this right now. I'm insulting the, let's call it like 50 people that have like top comments of stuff that are nothing to do with the video. Those They left those comments regardless of the video and they're just doing that because it's, you know, for some reason people are upvoting them. I don't know who, but like they're at the top there and uh, therefore I think there's like a few ways we can fix this. So the first way is if you do want to, you know, let me know something, just because you see there's garbage in the comments, it doesn't mean you shouldn't add yours to it. I feel like there's a momentum effect of comments where as soon as there's a bunch of awful stuff, all it becomes is awful. Just because you see awful, it doesn't mean you shouldn't try and put a normal comment in there because I try to read every Q&A Saturday question and if you have a good question in there, then that'll be answered. But also try and downvote the terrible responses or try and upvote the good ones and also report as spam these spam comments. That's, uh, as Frontline Production says, if we all do that, it can make the comments a bit better. And although that's not, you know, like gonna happen easily overnight, it's something I think would make YouTube much better if YouTube did something about it. But, you know, as like individual channels, this is what we can do and it'd be pretty great because I love reading comments most of the time. I don't like reading some comments, but I like to read uh, what your actual feedback is and that's why I mostly ask on Twitter and stuff at this point, just in case you are curious. So let's move to the third question, shall we? Which is a pretty big one, actually, uh, which comes in from Fra Francis Lapointe Jr., who says, Toy Cat, do, what do you think about the shutdown of popular Pixelmon uh, mod for PC? And if so, what do you think about, oh, sorry, have you heard about it? And what do you think about it? So what do I think about Pixelmon shutting down on PC? Well, the thing about Pixelmon is you got to bear in mind, this is always an inevitability. The, qu the question wasn't off like, oh yeah, like, is this going to be shut down? The question was, when is this going to be shut down? Because you got to bear in mind, um, when it comes to uh, intellectual property laws, if you don't defend uh, your intellectual property, uh, then you're, you know, you're effectively, you know, you can't selectively enforce it. You have to enforce it as soon as you learn about something because otherwise you can lose it. And that's not good. You know, imagine if Pokemon, you know, a Nintendo or uh, the Pokemon company, I think they're called, uh, lost the rights to Pokemon. That would be a devastating thing. So when there's this Minecraft on PC, which is just basically Pokemon in Minecraft, uh, you can imagine that it's surprising it lasted this long. However, what I think about it, like Ash Shunk Down, I think it's lame. I think the fact that we have the system set up in a way where like really cool fan content, like everyone loved Pixmon. It was one of the most successful games. I had friends who like, you know, like made a living on Pixamon for like years, at least back in the day. I think it was something to do with servers, but like Pixamon was like one of the most successful, perhaps the most successful mod in terms of like just entirely adapting the gameplay. It had its own server community, it had its own whole thing. And I think honestly, just shutting it down is a bit awful. I don't know, you know, like right now, that's kind of what Nintendo has to do. Like they're kind of, you know, they're the bad guys for lots of reasons, but there's not much we can do about this. Uh, but as far as like, oh yeah, so it sucks that's shut down. I think the best thing you can do is download the current version before they legally stop having to, I, that might even be now, but like try 
try and find an, uh, the newest version and just keep on enjoying it because they can't take you, they can't force you to remove the files from your computer and uh, that's kind of the little, not loophole, but that's how you can get past that one. So let's move on to the fourth question, shall we? Uh, which comes in from Ton935, who says, when you refer in Celsius to a majority of people who only use Fahrenheit, and yeah, this is um this is something I see a bunch when I talk about temperatures, even though I'll say Celsius, like, you know, like, oh, it's 35 degrees Celsius here. People will be like, oh, it's only 35 degrees, Toy Cat. That's not even too hot, because, you know, I, I, it's 90 where I live. You should go try that. And, uh, you know, this is this is like an, a, a weird thing when it comes to, like, the American thing. And I think, actually, British people are a little bit, like, best inclined for this, because uh, Europeans pretty much only use metric on everything. And Americans pretty much only use imperial and don't understand uh, metric, if I'm not mistaken. Like, if you say kilometer to an American, what does that even mean? I mean, again, I'm generalizing. Some of you know, but I'm saying not all of you. So even though the majority of my viewers are uh, American, the one thing that I can't, like, you know, have a grip for both and say, oh yeah, this is 30 Celsius and like 90 Fahrenheit is the Celsius to Fahrenheit. The conversion between them, I've tried to learn it like a bunch of times so I could do it on top of my head, but honestly, I can't. I know that 100 is like somewhere in the 30s and I know that like freezing is somewhere above zero in, uh, <laughs> in uh, you know, Fahrenheit, but besides that, I don't know. They're different systems. Uh, Fahrenheit is objectively worse, I think. Celsius is pretty bad and Kelvin's better than both, but when it comes to like temperatures, there's nothing I can do about that. I can tell you distances. I can be like, oh yeah, that's like, you know, 2.5 kilometers or a one and a half miles, I think it'd be. I can tell you stuff like that, but I can't tell you Fahrenheit, Celsius, Fahrenheit. And just pro tip, if you are American and you are on the internet, learn the metric system. It's gonna eventually hit in America. It was law to change it at some point, but then they just, you know, backed off on it. It's gonna happen at some point. Learn it now and like, let's make the world a better place. You know, let's, uh, you know, it's funny actually, cause I just remember this now that I actually have, an, uh, I had an American friend uh, earlier this year and uh, she actually, because she did science or something, actually knew like metric measurements for anything. And I'm just saying like, you use it for science already, you use it for a bunch of stuff. Uh, just, you know, like if, if you're an American, learn learn metric a little bit. Like it's not too hard uh, because you know, sometimes you're gonna go to a country that isn't America and you're gonna need to know what kilometers and you need to know what everything else is. So yeah, there you go. Let's move on to the four, fifth question. Oh, oh. With, yeah, fifth question, shall we? Which comes in from Dusty Crane 147 who says, hashtag Q&A. Do you think after the Better Together update, there will be uh, Leave Without Saving or no? And this is one of the big things I'm gonna miss actually, because Leave Without Saving only exists on the Xbox One and PS4, i.e. the current gen versions, because it existed on the last gen version. So this isn't one of those features they're obligated to port over because it's kind of like a, you know, holdover off the older generation. So uh, yeah, do I think that after the Better Together update, there will be Leave Without Saving? I don't believe so. We haven't seen in any change log. It hasn't been confirmed yet. And that makes me think that there's gonna be a big loss to playing that game. If there's a creeper that explodes four seconds after you love your world, guess what? You've lost your stuff. You spend the next 40 minutes playing Minecraft, trying to put that together. Um, I've never been a fan of that too much, honestly, but I guess it's arguably cheating to exit without saving. So I get why it's not there, but I honestly, I really value it. Like I used, I had all save on for a little bit and then I realized like, oh yeah, this just allows you to not make giant mistakes. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna miss it a lot. And I think it's one of the things that makes me wanna play the current version, sometimes at least more than the old version. So. Uh, Sorry, the new version. So yeah, let's move on to the sixth question, shall we? Which comes in from Mode Riss, who says, uh, "Who do you, who will get the PvP advantage in the Better Together update?" So again, 1.2 coming to consoles will allow us to have a brand new version and play against Pocket Edition and Windows 10 players. So in theory, right now, Windows 10 players just annihilate the competition. So whenever I play Pocket Edition, uh, I used to do a lot for streams uh, on Mobcrash back in the day. I would be destroyed by people. It would be one of two things: I'd either be destroyed by someone who could actually control their character, or someone would just be walking out a wall and you know, like be easy to kill them because there's this giant, giant disparity between touch controls. Again, you're you're using two thumbs on a glass surface and just kind of hoping it connects versus using a mouse and a keyboard. Or, you know, even on the controller, uh, which is my preferred uh, form of input, the, the, the advantage you have to knowing exactly where your buttons are, to being able to make precise movements, it's gonna be so giant and a lot of servers are actually gonna adjust for this. Then they're gonna try not to put, you know, players who are new to the Pocketition up against players who have been playing console for a while now. I don't know exactly how they can do that, but they do have the ability to discriminate in a way between console players and Pocketition players. And hopefully that means that, you know, playing PVP on console won't just be going in there, slaughtering a bunch of, you know, like <laughs> kids using a touchscreen or something and then like walking out. I'm hoping it'll be a bit better, but we'll see. And uh, yeah, that's one of the things we'll see on my channel, I guess. So let's move into the seventh question, shall we? Which comes in from Mango Monkey, who says, at the rate people are subscribing, when do you think you'll hit 1 million subscribers? So uh, I think I'll hit one, uh, so okay, right, I hit 800,000. It was a big milestone on a stream. Really pleased with that. And uh, honestly, the subscriber growth for channel 
channel is just assumed by some people like, oh yeah, channels always get bigger, but that's not always the case. Some channels like just die, some channels lose subscribers. Uh, so the fact that I have been consistently growing has been really crazy, but yeah, hanging a million is not guaranteed like a lot of people do think, and I'd like to see it, but it's not, uh, you know, it's not definitely gonna happen. Anyway, the reason I bring that up is because at the current rate, I hit 700,000 last December, and I hit 800,000 just this July. At every seven months gaining 100,000 subscribers, I guess it would be 14 months from now, so next September or next like October. Um, however, that, you know, if lots of things could change between now and then. Hopefully we do it faster, but yeah, right now, uh, October next year, 2018, looks like it's gonna be the year of the golden play button, and I'm honestly like, it's gonna be one of those big milestones where it's like, I did a thing on YouTube, uh, if, if we can do it. So yeah, that's, that's my thing. If you're watching this video and you're not subscribed, wouldn't you like to help me towards that gold play button? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, hit subscribe and give me the bell because, uh, you know, you want notifications. Anyway, let's move on to the next uh, question, shall we? Which comes in from uh, Dre TMG. I think that's Dre. It might be Dre TMG, but Dre TMG asks, do you think you'll ever upgrade to a Procaster, XLR version of a podcaster, uh, or is the setup, or is it too much hassle and cables too? So uh, yeah, actually I've looked into the Procaster and I've wanted it for a while now. So just to everyone who is listening to this and I was like, what is a Procaster or a podcaster? So uh, there are kind of like three levels. It gets a lot more complex than this, but easy stuff for a PC. You have like three levels of like uh, audio quality. You got the 3.5 millimeter jack, the, you know, the pink cables and stuff. That's pretty bad. That's why your iPhone headphones, they're gonna sound acceptable, but they're never gonna be great. They're never gonna be the, the top end like sound quality. Cause again, there's only so much information there. USB is a bit higher. Cause there's, I think there's a higher bandwidth uh, capability. You can send other stuff down the wire too. And then uh, even higher than that is specialized audio cables. I believe it's called the XLR cable, but it might be like a monster cable or something. Um, but there's like, there's, you know, electric cables like that. You need a mix amp for it. You need a specific sound card in your PC for it. And I just haven't, um, you know, like the amount of effort it is, is kind of problematic to me because I like to travel with my setup. So even though I know the Procast is a little bit better sounding, I can't spot the difference too much, at least in YouTube videos. Again, bear in mind, I'm making YouTube videos of this. Not, I'm not like a sing songwriter. Um, and that's why in case you, uh, yeah, just, you know, Fun fact, if you are gonna start YouTube and you wanna go max quality, the podcast, uh, the Procaster is an easy way, to, a better way to do it. But when it comes to portability, when it comes to usability, easeability, just making things work, uh, the Podcaster works a bit better. But thank you for asking, Dre and TMG. It's good to see people took an interest in the setup this much. So yeah, let's move to the ninth question, shall we? Which comes in from Sleek Panther YT, who says, does infinite overworlds mean PC side end dimensions? And guess what? Yes, it does. And and Infinite ends on the brand new version of Minecraft. It's gonna be pretty great, uh, if you ask me at least. So yeah, let's move to the next uh, and final question, which comes in from Max Gaming LV, who says, hashtag Q&A. Uh, would you like to travel to Latvia sometime? We have consistent weather of winter and summer. In summer, the average is 22. And in winter, it's minus nine C. I think that's minus nine, it might just be nine C. But uh, what we got uh, one day in January, where it's minus 22 C. We had minus 22.5 as a record this year. And also if you come in winter, have fun in the snow. So yeah, actually I was, uh, Latvia is one of the like few EU countries I haven't been to yet that I really want to go to. It's it's weird, I've like, uh, even though Latvia is a country of like a small number of million subscribers of people, I have so many subscribers from Latvia, which is interesting to me. And also I want to go to Latvia because um, again, the snowy thing, they have a bobsleigh track. That's right, there's like 16 countries in the world with a bobsleigh track. One of them's Latvia, but you can go down it in the winter, I'm not mistaken. So I'd love to go down a bobsleigh. I don't know how that even works or if it's like even fun, but I would love to go on a bobsleigh um, and uh, also, I'd, uh, I'd love to like have some snow huskies in the thing and like skiing's great. My point being is yes, I'm gonna come to Latvia, probably like somewhere near the Riga area. And uh, yeah, I don't know, I, I, for everyone who's a Latvian subscriber who's been asking this just nonstop, yes, I wanna go to Latvia so bad. I'll probably go this winter and uh, maybe I'll travel vlog it. Although people didn't seem to like the uh, Burnham travel vlog. Anyway, with that said, I hope you all enjoyed today's uh, Q&A Saturday. Like it if you liked it, share if you really liked it and subscribe if you're new around here. I make videos like this one every single day on my channel. And if you subscribe, you'll see them daily on your homepage. Make sure you bell me because notifications, they're pretty good. Um, I'm just saying, they, they like to see the videos, wouldn't you like to do that? And this week it's particularly important because I'm doing a bunch of streams. It's like stream week. I wanted to do every day, but it's like kind of tricky to keep up with. So I'm doing just a bunch of extra streams this week. And if you want to see those, and if you bell me, you'll see them from start to finish live and you can interact with me and ask me what I had for breakfast or whatever else you, you know you're into. So anyway, thank you very much for watching today's video and I'll see you next time. Bye.